The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. I've always loved stories, and I've always loved telling stories and hearing stories, and I've, once I learned to write and hold a pencil in my hand that was just just wonderful. It was like a magic wand. I've always written. I loved it. Elizabeth Boatwright Coker of Hartsville, South Carolina was an author, poet, and lecturer born April 21, 1909. She earned a BA degree from Converse College in 1929. I was editor of The Concept and at that time, the concept won all the prizes of the colleges, and I won the Carroll Prize and the Skylark Prize of the Charleston Poetry Society. And well, I just wrote and won prizes. <laughs> when I graduated from Converse, all of us in those days went to New York to work. Everybody went, and you either worked at Childs or at Saks Fifth Avenue, but I wanted to work at the New York Times, so I went and brought, took my brochure and told how I must have a job at the Times, and they read my qualifications, and then they listened to me, and then they laughed, and they said, why don't you go and get a model's job? <laughs> but we'll keep your brochure. Well, they did, and this was in 1929, and I worked as a model all summer long, and then came autumn, and then came the stock market crash. And on the middle of October, I got two letters one day, and one was from the New York Times saying they had reconsidered, and they'd read my brochure again, and they thought they had just the job for me to come in for an interview. I also got a letter from my father, who was president of the Carolina National Bank in Darlington, saying his bank had failed, and would I come home? So you can guess what I did. I came home, and I married James Coker in 1930. His father died in 1931, and he was made president of Sunoco when he was 27, and I was 22. So I had to stop writing for a while. Elizabeth and James Lyde Coker III had two children, Penelope and James IV. I worked in the hospitals all during World War II, and I found I just was crazy about everybody I <laughs> nursed, and I, I loved it, and I found I had the gift of touch. And uh, I could quite, they put me to quiet people who had been operated on and had ether because in those days they didn't have recovery rooms, you know, and all these fancy drugs. So I found that I could quiet people. Her interest in writing never waned. In 1950, her first novel was published. That I wrote as a short story first. I went to Middlebury to the writers' conference that they had there at Breadloaf, and Robert Frost read it, and he said, this is too good for a short story. I want you to make it into a novel. Daughter of Strangers was the story of Charlotte Lejeune, a woman of mixed blood caught between the worlds of masters and slaves. Today I keep wondering, where am I going? Will the rest of my life be spent hidden in this cultivated garden? I feel like twirling in a dance. I will pick both my arms full of sweet flowers and mass them everywhere so that the whole drawing room will be fragrant and full of beauty. Coca College had a literary festival in those days. It was very interesting. And uh, James Michener was to be the speaker that year. This was October of 1950. South Pacific had just come out. So I had never made a speech in my life, and James Michener introduced me with my first speech. <laughs> and it was just, I look back at a picture of that time, and it just seemed so wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
Thus began Coker's prolific career as a writer of historical romances. Oh, I've always loved history, especially the South history, mm -hmm. <laughs> better than anything. And in Daughter of Strangers, I use a lot of Gullah. And now you know that they went through a period where Gullah was not, was off the scene. But Gullah is the deepest link between the black African-American heritage and then Native Africa and America. And now there's a great fashion to bring Gullah back. Is this the new gal? Does she? Pompey hopes Yana gets along. She's good for the eyes, but powerful quiet on the ears. Charlotte, this is Chloe. Chloe will tell Yana where Yana is to sleep. Show sure, gal, step right over the door. Yana got sky eyes, gal. Can Yana read the future? Coker's fourth novel was based on the apocryphal stories of Marie Boozer, captured by the Yankees near the end of the Civil War. Well, she was the most beautiful girl that ever grew up in Columbia, and she rode away, and nobody ever really knew what happened to her. Europe, 1872. As February turned into March and tulips blossomed in the Tuileries Gardens, Marie knew she was the happiest woman in the world. She was the center of admiration, dancing with Phoenix and gathering more spectators to watch them waltz than the velvet-eyed English beauty Mabel Gray and her Russian Duke. The heroine of Blood Red Roses, published in 1977, is Angelica, who lived on Hilton Head Island during the war. She was the only one that was left behind when the Yankees occupied the, the island. So I tell about her living there under the Yankee occupation, you see. Beside the gold sofa on which I had sat so often in Beau's arms, I knelt. And it was Beau, not God, I sought. God seemed too far away. Beau had been here in this very room. It was I, Beau's wife, who was left behind in the midst of the enemy. It was Beau I needed not God. Elizabeth Boatwright Coker continued to receive awards and honors until her death, September 1, 1993. She was active in literary organizations, served on many boards, and taught the next generation of writers. Her advice to a young author was to believe in your ultimate triumph, develop and cultivate, make a commitment Use your mind, but never, never sacrifice your heart.